completely bald tire. Can we just take tread and glue it on? Maybe make our own pattern? Of course we can, or else there wouldn't be a video on it. Let me show you. So here we have a little go-kart with completely bald tires. Well, that, that one's completely bald. That one's got a little more tread. That front one over there is completely bald. That one's a little more uh, tread, but because I do a lot of donuts, especially in the snow, in the winter. Oh. That hurt. That sucks. And so I've eaten the tires. Time for new tires, but I figured, you know what? Let's see if this glue that I've been using for sidewall repairs is good enough to actually glue on tread. I've done a couple tests off camera before this and it's working amazing. So I have no doubt that gluing tread and then taking this on the pavement will work. So I'm gonna show you what I do, how it's done. So you can see I've already done some, but I left some just to show you guys. So what I'm using is this is actually sidewall out of a tire. I think you can probably actually, this one says contact or something. Um, that one says continental. So just add the sidewall of a car tire. Just cut these up. I'll show you how to do that in a second. But just cut up strips, sand it the inside, sand the surface where you want to go, and glue it down. About that simple. So what am I using to sand it? Um, this is just a roll lock disc. I also do have a, a tire buffer. That leaves a coarser finish. Either one works. You could chuck just a sanding disc and a drill. Doing it by hand, you probably wouldn't get it good enough. You need to get down to clean rubber. Get my head out of the way. You're just breaking the surface, getting down to clean. And then I like to degrease it all, make sure it's all degreased. What I use for that is carburetor cleaner. It's the same thing as acetone, so you could use acetone. Uh, I have not tried brake clean, but I'm sure brake clean would work just as well. The inside of the tire comes with ridges. I also clean that off and make that smooth. The procedure is pretty basic. I'm just gonna take some glue. I'll show you what glue this is in a second. But I'm just going to apply some glue Look fast, put it down, smear it out. That's done. Hold some pressure on it for 15 seconds. Done. Move on to the next one. Glue my thumb to it. Ah, crap. So how do you get your material? You get it from the sidewall of a tire. You take an old bald tire, usually there's no tread on it, and you slice right where the tread ends, which is about right here, and you just slice all the way around, and you end up with one of these things. So then the sidewall of any radial tire, or even bias ply, there is no metal cords. In the sidewall right here, there is a steel band right here that goes all the way around, but nothing in this entire zone all the way around, and you can use all of that. But now we run into the problem, there's always gonna be these ridges, so we just have to sand those ridges off, and it's easier to do before you slice this up into little pieces. It's actually not that hard to cut. Um, this is a car tire. Uh, most car tires are about a quarter inch thick. Uh, truck tires, you can get them up to, you know, maybe three eighths of an inch thick, but it gets, that's when it starts getting really hard to actually slice. Um, can be done, not impossible. Just a little bit more work, but you get a little bit more tread, you know, so what's the trade off worth? We got plenty of material right here to do what we want to do for the front tire. So let's glue, glue that one on. I guess I should mention, it also does cut with scissors once you get it started. Um, if you have good scissors, you will, I mean, it's not super easy. You will wear out your hand pretty dang fast. But if you're cutting small pieces out for tread blocks, yes, scissors are the way to go. 
Ah, there we go. So if I'm cutting these, well, I'm going to cut these into little pieces. And so definitely easier just to uh, scissor slice them that way. But cutting long distances, you'll destroy your thumb. I do think I like about a 60 grit um, Rolock sanding disc better than the dedicated tire buffer. I think it leaves a better finish. You could make yourself some custom, you know, like tri-ribs or something. Tires, if you're doing like a garden tractor, you can make some chevron patterns, you know. Give yourself an awesome little chevron pattern, something like that. You could actually just wrap them around like this for the back of, on a garden tractor for actually non-scratchable snow chains, stuff like that. But I'm just gonna glue a couple little blocks right on. No big deal, we'll just go around and glue them every couple inches. In all honesty, a tire this small, I would probably just buy a new one. They're cheap enough, but this is for science. I, I'm, I'm curious how well this is gonna hold up. So that's what we're doing here. Okay, it's been sitting for about a half hour. I'm ready to test it out. I did end up putting a couple little score marks in these longer pieces, just because I thought maybe if it grabs one chunk, it would just rub off one chunk. Um, this kind of got tedious, um, kind of boring, but we did it. They're not all straight. If one or two fall off, it's because I didn't do a good job, because um, I just got impatient. Um, the idea though is once you stick it, you can't move it around. You start moving it around and I've noticed and I push it down and then it just fails. You got one attempt. You put the glue on, stick it, hold it, that's it. Don't move it, it'll fail because I had a couple that I'm kind of moved around and then I went back and checked them and they kind of just peeled right off. But um, otherwise, if you just get it on there, done. It sticks amazing and my tests show um, that when you peel that off, it'll peel off rubber underneath or leave rubber from this on the tire it bonds so well so let's just go give it a rip on pavement this is a live axle go-kart meaning both wheels are locked together solid and so whenever you make a turn one wheel has to scrub so one wheel has to drag and so that's super hard on tires and why these tires are essentially worn out so let's go do it They're all still on there. What do you think? So probably one of the hardest things we can do to it is just do circles and scrub that tire hard that way and it'll also scrub the back tire. So we'll do a couple just donuts. Fell out. My bad. Hop back in. <laughs> Somebody had a bad day. There we go, I didn't lose a single one, put about four miles on it. And you can see how bad I'm actually wearing those. This front tire right here, I mean the whole front end's been hammered and bent and 
it scrubs pretty hard and I was scrubbing pretty hard but you can see how much I've actually even worn off but they're not going anywhere I didn't lose a single one which is impressive on the back same thing you can see it doesn't scrub as hard here you can actually still read some of the logos it's starting to break up the front edge a little bit from traction but yeah you can see the back doesn't nothing like the front that wears out some of them you know you can start seeing the cords in the tire poking through smoothing off this one right here was really kind of getting it but didn't lose a single one back here so I probably have about 10 to 15 miles on hard gravel road like this and another 5 to 10 miles on like rocky bumpy road and just a teeny bit of pavement and check this out I put a little blue dot so I wouldn't lose it right here and we come up here this is a piece of rubber I glued onto the tread surface yep look at that it sticks about a quarter inch higher and all the rest of the lugs I put it towards the middle so it gets whacked every single time and it ain't coming off it's a piece of trad now that glue is amazing So you want to know what this glue is it's actually made by 3m it's a 3m scotch weld plastic and rubber adhesive it's meant just to glue difficult to bond surfaces this is the pr40 but i've used the pr100 600 and 1500 and they all work great um, the higher the number just the thicker it is and i actually think i might like the 600 better um, just because it's a little bit thicker fills in a little gig gaps a little bit better it's not quite as runny um, but the 100 works fantastic, the 40 works fantastic, even the 1500 work for it, fantastic. So I'll put links below where you guys can actually find this, buy it. It's about 15 bucks for a tube. Um, comes, you can see the black line where it was full. Doing all the stuff I just barely did used about, about a quarter of the bottle. So it cost me around $4 to fix two tires, kind of. Um, it actually lasts quite a bit, and a lot of it got all over my fingers. Um, and the easiest way to remove it is acetone or carburetor cleaner let that soak in and it'll come right off of your fingers or your lips because you accidentally put the lid in your mouth with stuff on it so so here's one of my sample pieces that i glued i did clamp it and then i it took a ton of force but i was able to peel it apart and you can see what it did this was a pr 1500 and you can see boom and this was another one that i did and then boom, you can see that it removes the actual rubber itself. The rubber tears before the bond actually tears. And it's not easy, you're just ripping straight rubber. I didn't want to tell you this, but you're a dog. No, you, your dog. Did you know this? Huh? You did? Aw, that's good.